Myself and Amber have just taken part in this year's Exhibition of Wildlife Art, and I thought it would be cool to show you one of the pieces I created for the exhibition, and talk a little bit about what goes into preparing for an exhibition. This piece is a leopard that I named Emerald Eyes. You'll see why at the end of the video, but it's pretty easy to guess. The first thing when preparing for an exhibition is preparing and choosing your pieces. And unfortunately, that's the easy bit. Choose artwork that fits with the theme of the exhibit and make sure that all of the pieces work well together. Make sure they're all similar styles, similar colours, subjects or mediums. Once you've chosen your artwork, you need to get it framed. A frame can make all of the difference with a painting, giving it a professional looking finish. Framing can be very expensive, so make sure to account for the framing costs in the price of your artwork. Amber and I do a lot of framing of our pieces ourselves. We hand pick a frame for each piece. We then have the lengths chopped to size. Then we construct the frame and fit the piece ourselves. This is time consuming, but it's part of our process to make sure that each piece is framed properly for the specific exhibition that we're going to. Once you have your pieces framed, it's time to think about the naming and pricing. Naming pieces can sometimes be really easy. The name just jumps out at you. If it doesn't, this can be one of the most frustrating parts to the process. I often reach out to you guys on social media to help out with this part, as I love hearing all of your creative ideas for names. Pricing can also be difficult. There are so many different variables that go into pricing a piece of original art. I could go into a whole video about this, and I probably will at some point, but for now, the best simple advice I can give is look at other artists in a similar niche with a similar level of skill and price your art similarly to theirs. For exhibitions, you, you want to try and make some money, so don't undervalue your artwork, but you also need to price your work so that they're accessible to your buyers. One thing that I hate doing is writing about myself, which unfortunately you need to do for your artist statement or bio. Keep it short and simple, who you are, where you come from, and what your art is about. Update your website and social media with all of the key information about the exhibition and your new artwork. This is again something that I really don't like doing. It's a really time consuming process. Sometimes people don't really think about all of the different jobs you need to do as an artist. And you aren't actually just painting and drawing all day. Once everything's set up, it's time for the transport. Make sure everything is packed up safely. Again, another job and time consuming task. Once the car is packed up, sometimes you might even need to hire a van. You have to transport your work to the exhibition, which could be hundreds of miles away. Luckily for us, the exhibition of wildlife art is only about an hour away from where we live, so the transport time wasn't too bad. You then have to set up and hang your work. You have to make sure that everything is level and arranged properly. This can take a few hours to do, depending on the number of artworks. So make sure you factor in time for the setup. Once everything's set up, most exhibitions will have a private preview where the gallery or the curators and artists will invite people to view the artwork before the general public. So we're just on our way to the preview for the exhibition Wildlife Art. Everything's hung up and ready, so fingers crossed for a good show. Hi guys! <laughs> Let's go! Here's a look at some of the work that I produced for this exhibition. We made the setup so much easier for ourselves by planning the layout using Photoshop before we arrived. We knew the size of our space and the sizes of our framed artworks, so spent a bit of time planning a nice composition that worked well and looked pleasing. The exhibition was so busy that we didn't really get a chance to do much filming. The days were spent talking to buyers and artists, 
demonstrating work and handing out lots and lots of business cards. So it's the end of the first day, the preview evening, and I sold the, the turtles and the lion charcoal, which is really good. And um, so fingers crossed, we're gonna get to bed now and then fingers crossed in the morning and tomorrow we sell some more pieces. Overall, we had a really good exhibition with both of us selling a number of pieces. All of the remaining pieces can be seen via the Studio Wildlife website. The whole experience of exhibiting can be physically and emotionally draining, with lots of highs and lows. It does take a lot out of you, but overall I love exhibiting as it gets me out of the studio and face to face with people who love my art. There's nothing better than actually seeing the emotions on people's faces as they see your artwork in person rather than on a tiny screen. It just makes the whole experience so valuable and so rewarding. So if you haven't already entered any exhibitions, why not put some pieces together and give it a go? As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.